Hello everyone, my name is David. Today we are going to take a look at another horrible case with you. Friends, today's case is going to be quite different because by the time this story ends, you might start showing sympathy for the killer and get angry at the victim's actions. This case became so high profile that an entire state police force in India worked day and night to solve it and catch the killer. This story is from Bilai, a city in the state of Chhattisgarh, India. On November 10, 2015, an old man named I.P. Mishra, who lived in Bilai, called the Inspector General of Police. I.P. Mishra was a very wealthy businessman in Chhattisgarh. He was the chairperson of Gangajali Education Society and the chairman of Shankaracharya Group of College. Additionally, he had two more colleges, meaning thousands of students were studying in I.P. Mishra's colleges. His son, Abhishek Mishra, was the director of Shankaracharya Group of College, but on November 10th, I.P. Mishra called the Inspector General of Police and said that his son, Abhishek Mishra, had been missing since the previous night, November 9th, and his phone was switched off. He asked for help in finding his son. Now, when I.P. Mishra, one of the wealthy residents of the city, called the police, they immediately became alert and quickly registered Abhishek Mishra's missing complaint. After this, some high-ranking police officers went to the Mishra family's house to gather information about Abhishek Mishra. Here, the members of the Mishra family explained that Abhishek had gone to Delhi for some important work and had come home yesterday on November 9th. However, around 8 p.m., he left the house alone in his Skoda car, telling the family he had an urgent task and would return shortly. But when Abhishek did not return home for a long time, his family called him, but he did not answer. After some time, Abhishek sent a message on WhatsApp to his father and wife, saying that he had some work and it would take a little time, but he would be home soon. It should be noted that Abhishek Mishra was married and had a son and a daughter. Anyway, it was very late at night, and when I.P. Mishra tried to call his son again, his phone was switched off. However, Abhishek's family did not worry too much because Abhishek had previously had to attend to business-related matters at night. So everyone went to sleep, thinking that Abhishek would come home during the night. But when the morning of November 10th came, the Mishra family saw that Abhishek had still not returned home, and when they tried to call him, his phone was still switched off. After hearing all this, the police began their investigation. Each family member was asked about their conversations with Abhishek on November 9th. However, the police did not find any clues. Abhishek's family told the police that Abhishek had left home in a hurry in his car. Abhishek's sudden disappearance deeply worried his family. Along with the police, Abhishek Mishra's father and some employees from his college also began searching for him. IP Mishra even called some relatives to help find Abhishek. When Abhishek had been missing for three to four days, theories began to emerge that he might have been kidnapped. As I mentioned before, IP Mishra was one of the wealthiest people in the city, so the police considered this theory seriously. The police officers asked IP Mishra if the family had any ongoing feuds or enemies. IP Mishra responded that there was nothing of that sort, and everyone in the family got along well. Since Abhishek Mishra was the son of a wealthy man, the police distributed his photo and car number to every police station in the state to find him as soon as possible. Abhishek Mishra left his home on November 9th, and on November 11th, 2015, the police received a call from an unknown person. This person informed the police that a Skoda car had been parked near Raipur Airport for the past day. Let me inform you that Raipur is another city in the state of Chhattisgarh, which is 20 miles away from Pillai. Raipur's airport is also located in this city. After receiving a call from an unknown person, the Bilai police set out to investigate the car at the airport. On the evening of November 9th, Abhishek had also left in a silver-colored Skoda car, but when the police reached the car near the airport, they found neither Abhishek nor any of his belongings in the car. By this time, the police had confirmed with Abhishek's family that the car indeed belonged to him, and they speculated that if his car was found near the airport, he might have taken a flight to another country. However, after investigating this theory, the police found no leads. In fact, 
This region of Chhattisgarh is heavily influenced by Naxalites, which results in numerous kidnapping cases being reported to the police. Therefore, the police suspected that Abhishek might have been kidnapped by the Naxalites. Abhishek's car was found between the cities of Pillai and Raipur, so the police checked every CCTV camera along this route. There was also a toll booth on this route, and the police particularly checked the CCTV footage from the time Abhishek left his house. Their efforts paid off when they spotted Abhishek's Skoda car on one of the CCTV cameras. However, the issue was that the footage was very blurry, making it impossible to identify the people inside the car. But here the police discovered that besides Abhishek, there were two other people in Abhishek's car. The police began to suspect that these individuals might be kidnappers because the man sitting in the driver's seat was not wearing the clothes Abhishek had left his house in. This suspicion turned into reality when on November 11th, IP Mishra received a ransom call. The kidnapper said, We have kidnapped Abhishek, and if you don't pay the money, we will kill him. However, IP Mishra noticed something peculiar. The kidnapper started and ended his statement with Lal Salam. The police had been tapping IP Mishra's phone and were able to trace the call. The police found that the call came from a village about 40 miles from Pillai City. They checked the call history of that number and discovered that very few calls had been made from it, suggesting the SIM card was newly purchased. The police expanded their investigation and began examining all active numbers in the area from which the ransom call was made. They reviewed the call details of approximately 1,100 numbers, and over 500 police officers were involved in the investigation. Senior police officers repeatedly listened to the kidnapper's call recording. Here, the police noticed one thing. The kidnapper started the conversation by saying, Lal Salam. Several Naxalite organizations in Bihilai also start their conversations with Lal Salam. Because of this, the police began to suspect that Naxalites had kidnapped Abhishek Mishra. The police then checked the records from all the police stations in the city to see who had gone missing before Abhishek's kidnapping and how the Naxalites had communicated with their families. After reviewing all these records, the police discovered something surprising. Many Naxalite organizations in Pillai do start their conversations with Lal Salam, but they speak to ordinary people in a completely normal manner. Whenever they talk to the families of kidnapping victims, they did so in a very normal way. Now the police realized that the kidnapper who abducted Abhishek was trying to mislead them. The kidnapper knew that several Naxalite organizations in the city use Lal Salam to start their conversations. To divert the police's attention, the kidnapper also started the conversation with IP Mishra by saying Lal Salam. While the police were trying to find Abhishek, they received information that a dead body had been found about 80 miles from Bilai, and it was headless. Without a face, it was difficult to identify the body, so the police tried to match the DNA of the body with IP Mishra's blood. The Mishra family breathed a sigh of relief when the DNA did not match. Well, there wasn't any information about this headless body in any article, but now it had been more than two weeks since Abhishek went missing. Because of this, the case was handed over to a special investigation team. This team first examined Abhishek's call details and his location on the last day he was seen. Abhishek's call detail records revealed thousands of numbers and the police interrogated several of them for almost two weeks. These included Abhishek's friends, relatives, and especially those who had previously worked at IP Mishra College. But eventually, the police's suspicion fell on a woman named Kimsi Jane because she was the last contact Abhishek spoke to on a call. Although the police interrogated Kimsi, they released her afterward. However, when they started investigating her background, they found out that Kimsi had a job as an HR at Shankaracharya College and was also Abhishek's personal secretary. But when Kimsi got married in 2013, she left her job. Additionally, the old staff at the college told the police that Abhishek and Kimsi were in a relationship. Still, the police didn't suspect Kimsi because they often talked on calls or chats. Kimsi was married to a man named Vikas Jain. Here, the police had interrogated Kimsi 
and Kimsey admits that she and Abhishek were in a relationship, but now they are just friends. It is also noted that Kimsey's location shows she was at home all day on November 9th. However, when the police tracked Abhishek's location, it was found that he had come near Kimsey's house from his home. After staying there for some time, he headed towards the Raipur airport, and since then, his location has disappeared. Since the police didn't have any other evidence, they began collecting information on Kimsey's family and background. It had been 41 days since Abhishek went missing, so the police also looked into the background of Kimsey's husband, Vikas Jain. According to some news articles, Vikas and Abhishek graduated from the same college and knew each other very well. Then, the police tracked Vikas's location on November 9th, which introduced a new twist in the case. Friends, before moving forward in the video, I have a small request for you. I want to let you know that behind the David True Crime channel, there is a team of five people who work hard to bring you the best quality content through thorough research. If you appreciate our efforts, you can support us according to your preference by visiting the link provided in the description. Your small support will motivate us to work effectively on the channel. Thank you. Now, let's continue with the story. The police found a clue that when Abhishek passed by Kimsey's house, Vikas also left his house at the same time. Interestingly, wherever Abhishek went, Vikas's location also showed the same place. The question here was what Vikas was doing with Abhishek, and when Abhishek's location stopped on the Raipur Highway, Vikas Jain's location also stopped there. After staying there for some time, Vikas returned home, but Abhishek's location was still showing on the Raipur Highway. Only after this did the police become suspicious of Vikas, which is why they arrested him at his home on December 22, 2015. That day, Kimsey was out with her children and had no idea that her husband had been arrested by the police. On the other hand, the police started questioning Vikas, but he wasn't answering any of their questions properly. So the police had no other option and began interrogating Vikas more strictly, presenting all the evidence they had gathered in the investigation. Seeing all this, Vikas lost his courage and then confessed that Abhishek was no longer in this world. Vikas, along with Kimsi and Vikas's uncle Ajit Singh, had killed Abhishek. Vikas then told the police the entire story behind Abhishek's murder and how it was carried out. Actually, when Kimsi was working at Abhishek's college, they became good friends after a few days. They used to talk on the phone for hours, and later they started dating, which marked the beginning of their relationship. However, in 2013, Kimsi's family arranged her marriage. Here, Kimsi also liked Vikas because he fulfilled her every wish, and besides, Vikas had no shortage of money as he was a businessman. On the other hand, Abhishek also got married the same year, and from here Abhishek and Kimsey should have parted ways, but that didn't happen. Although Kimsey wanted to distance herself from Abhishek, he didn't want her to keep her distance. Actually, just like Kimsey used to talk to him on the phone before, used to chat with him, and the two used to go out together, Abhishek still wanted to do all that. But when Kimsey told Abhishek that they should distance themselves from each other now, Abhishek started blackmailing her. According to Vikas Jain's statement, Abhishek had some objectionable pictures of Kimsey, and because of this, Abhishek used to blackmail her. Due to this blackmailing, Kimsey quit her job and distanced herself from Abhishek. However, Abhishek kept calling and harassing Kimsey repeatedly. He wanted her to continue talking to him after marriage just like she used to before marriage. Kimsey endured this torture for about two years, but when Vikas became suspicious of Kimsey in the last months of 2015, he talked to her. After that, Kimsey told Vikas her whole story, that she was in a relationship with Abhishek two years ago, but since her marriage, she had been trying to distance herself from Abhishek. But now he was blackmailing her. Hearing this, Vikas got very angry and decided that talking to Abhishek was useless. He needed to be killed because his family was powerful. After that, Vikas Jain spoke to his uncle Ajit Singh. The three then made a complete plan together to kill Abhishek. After that, on the evening of November 9th, 
Kimsi calls Abhishek and invites him to her home. She tells Abhishek that she is alone at home today because Vikas is out for some work and won't be returning home that day. Upon hearing this, Abhishek immediately leaves to meet Kimsi and tells his family that he is going to complete an urgent task and will return home soon. However, when Abhishek arrives at Kimsi's house after some time, Vikas and his uncle Ajit attack him with an iron rod on his head. Abhishek falls to the ground, but Vikas and Ajit continue to severely beat him. When they realize that Abhishek is dead, they bury his body in a six-foot deep pit in their own garden. In fact, they had already dug this pit beforehand and also threw a lot of salt with Abhishek's body to expedite its decomposition. Afterward, Vika starts driving Abhishek's car towards Raipur to divert police attention with Abhishek's phone. He knew that whenever a person goes missing, the police always check their last location. Vikas eventually abandons Abhishek's car near an empty place near Raipur Airport and destroys Abhishek's phone there. Additionally, Vikas himself called Abhishek's father, I.P. Mishra, to mislead the police investigation. After hearing the entire story, the police bring Vikas to his home on December 23rd, where Vikas point toward a corner of his garden. However, the police are confused because there was supposed to be a cauliflower field there, but they relocate these plants elsewhere and begin digging at the new spot. After digging nearly six feet deep, the police discover a human skeleton. Additionally, they find a chain, bracelet, slippers, and a watch at the site. Later, these items are shown to Abhishek's family, who identify them as belonging to Abhishek. The skeleton undergoes forensic examination at a nearby hospital. On December 24th, the police also arrest Kimsi, and by December 26th, Vikas's uncle Ajit Singh is also arrested. Subsequently, the police prepare a charge sheet, and the case begins in the session court. The case lasts a long time in court, and in May 2021, Ajit Singh and Vikas Jain are sentenced to life imprisonment. However, the main accused in this case, which triggered everything, had already been acquitted by the court. Nonetheless, I.P. Mishra challenged this session court decision in the High Court, and after a three-year trial, in March 2024, the High Court ordered the release of Ajit Singh and Vikas Jain from jail. The court, stating that the police only had circumstantial evidence, acquitted Vikas Jain and Ajit Singh, ruling that neither could be sentenced to imprisonment based solely on such evidence. In fact, there were no witnesses or concrete evidence in the case to establish that Vikas Jain, his wife Kimsi Jain, and Ajit Singh committed the murder. However, following this decision, Abhishek's elderly father's heart broke, and now he has challenged this decision in India's Supreme Court. But in future, if there are any updates in this case, we will definitely share them through David True Crime Channel's community posts. So with that, the Abhishek Mishra murder case comes to an end right here. Additionally, if you want to recommend any case for us to make a detailed video on, you can write the name of that case in the comment section. If you appreciate our efforts, like and share this video. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Thank you.